have you kept any memorabilia from the sets that you've been on? Um, I can neither confirm nor deny. If I rephrased it, have you found yourself in possession of anything from the sets? I can neither confirm nor, nor, nor deny. deny. There you go. Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. Our guest today is an actor, producer, and artist whose body of work includes Deadcom, Twin Peaks, Titanic, The Phantom, the highly undervalued film adaption of Orlando, and has more recently been seen in the, re the reboot of MacGruber. Today, he joins us to discuss this fantastic career. Please welcome back, Mr. Billy Zane. Greetings. Hello, friends. Hey. How are you? I'm good, yeah, hey. Billy. How you been, brother? I've been great. Hello, hello. Hope you had a fine holiday season. I'm trying to milk a little bit of the uh, last vestiges of uh, kind of a, a, a California winter up here at uh, Big Bear Mountain. Ah, uh, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. How 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 are the slopes? Mm. Um, they're frosty. Getting a little icy now. We had some fresh powder last week, but. Uh, uh, still pretty slick, you know. The kids are in a lesson, so I was able to break away. Right on. Here. Well, Billy, once again, thank you for joining us here on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Glad to see you in good health and good spirits. And uh, you've been doing thank some you. really good work uh, lately. Again, MacGruber, a lot of fun. Um, it was great, great seeing you in that role. And uh, since we're one on one today, um, I always ask this whenever I have a solo guest. Uh, I'd like to go back to being a little bit. What got you interested in acting? Um, my parents uh, were actors in Chicago on stage um, for years, so I grew up watching them perform. It was kind of in the DNA and in the family line, I guess. They never, you know, pressured nor expected uh, my sister and I to get into it, but it was a natural uh, progression. And exposure to a lot of great classic cinema made me appreciate Hollywood and old Hollywood and want to be part of new Hollywood, which was shaping around the time that I was turning 18. At the beginning of the then youth market, I guess, was really yeah. kind of brewing. So it seemed like good timing to go to Hollywood as a teenager during the age of teen movies in the 80s. Was there any of the classic Hollywood, uh, either films or uh, actors that uh, you came to admire? Certainly. Um, Gene Kelly heads the list just as oh. a consummate uh, actor, performer, choreographer, director, you know, uh, just a just a perfect, well-rounded artist, a, a specimen, you know. Absolutely. Uh, his Three Musketeers is brilliant. Oh, it's amazing. That's an amazing film. And his parody of it in Singing in the Rain is equally uh, yeah. fantastic. Or The Pirate, one of my one of my favorites, lesser known film of his. Uh, that Vincent Minnelli directed with uh, yeah. his then wife, Judy Garland. Yeah. Uh, amazing film. Did not do very well when it came out, but it's it's quite brilliant. Really very funny film. I, I, I um, So yeah, agree. Cary Grant, uh, uh, you know, uh, Joel McRae, I always liked. Uh, and uh, Preston Sturges movies. Uh, Comedies yeah. mostly. Bogey, just for the sake of Bogey. Sure. Because he was cool. But yeah, a lot of greats who I can't help but borrow from. <laughs> ah, no, it's 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 all good. It's all good. Yeah. Um, and then and it's fair to say that uh, that that Deadcom uh, uh, sort of like like leveled you up and uh, sort of it was your first sort of breakout role. I would say yes. That was my first uh, lead. I did something prior called the Brotherhood of Justice, which was the beginning of my kind of dabbling and well that's not true back to the future i was a you know i was a bully <laughs> i've been sure. playing you know bad guys i guess for a while you know and you pop with the you also role. you also did an episode of crime story a show that uh, i absolutely adored and i got to rewatch. that's uh, right i rewatched it uh during a uh, lockdown during covid and uh huh it's on Peacock. Those so, early uh, years in Chicago, the uh, the early uh, the early episodes, I think, were quite stunning. Um, it was fun to be part of that show, uh, with working with uh, Farina and my then already pal Bill Campbell, now Billy Campbell. Mm. He was Bill. Yeah. 
that's a great show but yeah really fun fun characters um and then yes to to your point dead calm was probably the first uh breakout lead uh character and uh what a character it was <laughs> hmm. huey warner yeah he had issues yeah yeah uh, that's a that's a lot of a lot of trauma in real time you know happening to him no, absolutely. And uh, you hit the ground running. And I, I mean, another thing I can't ask you about the Back to the Future stuff or or the we talked about the Phantom before. I would like to talk a little bit about Orlando, if that's cool, because I think that's another one oh, that's kind it. of fallen under, uh, under the cracks. And I think I that was another one I watched the past couple of years ago, and it still holds up tremendously. Sally Potter, wonderful director, a testament to her and Tilda Swinton's work. It was a great collaboration on their part. It's a wonderful adaptation of a Virginia Woolf novel, an allegory for uh, uh, gender politics, you know, as seen through the ages as the character kind of time travels in a way and sex changes, really, and at, at the worst ep ep epochs and eras for a different uh, gender. It really explores, you know, to be a man is to die for your country, to be a woman is to lose all your rights and have to be beholden to a man. So yeah. she keeps ping-ponging through the, through the ages to a position of you know uh the, the least power to least power and it really examines society's ills when it comes to uh, equanimity very much so very very much so um and of course the iceberg movie um <laughs> heard of it yeah 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 dead ahead something like that uh how did that begin dead ahead, for you? Dead ahead. yeah um that was uh an audition um i think they uh jim cameron wanted to meet with a few people um they had screened the phantom and uh want, wanted to take a meeting and uh a handful of folks i guess got to spend an hour with them and play and it was a real fun collaborative process so it was just spending time and coming up with cool ideas together and uh and enjoying the process as i think kind of when it's when you figure out you want to work with someone and yeah you know you could spend seven months and you don't really have to worry too much about them or that hopefully they'll contribute you know yeah to your uh, palate <clears throat> and uh yeah i was very grateful for uh, that experience and process he's an extraordinary uh extraordinary fellow really cool down-to-earth cat with crazy skills and uh but you know a punster and loves you know <laughs> good jokes and is a wit and is a bit of a daredevil it's a cool cat uh, real quick uh, uh tell us a little bit about your artwork um i uh i started in that particular um vein in um 97 on location uh, while filming Titanic actually it was uh, a means with which to pass uh, downtime while there for seven months in Mexico and uh, the piece behind me actually was one of my first where I'm standing there that piece yeah. behind me I did in Mexico it's called Telemundo uh, wow. and uh, it looked like there's a little TV in the middle and something spiraling out of it I paint them on the ground and then let the Sun kind of bake them and contort wow. them a little bit yeah. which were reminiscent of the kind of skins they would sell at the border when you'd cross from Tijuana into California. Um, right. Lots of, you know, it just, it, it, and there was a lot of found art objects like lobster cages and things that would wash up. I would make sculpture out of, I was really enjoying my time. I was coming back to LA quite often, almost every weekend. But then once I started turning this, the, uh, my, the garage and my condo into an art studio, I, I found, I just wanted to hang out in Mexico and make art. Wow. And then started showing like 10 years later because I, I didn't do it in order to show. I just started accumulating a kind of big body of work for myself, really. And then um, was invited to exhibit. And then I was surprised and pleased that uh, people found it authentic and liked it. And then asked me to do more shows and, and started collecting them. So go figure. But, uh, this is something I love. I have a show on right now at the Four Seasons. What a, a very, very minor blip, but uh, something I appreciated. I love your version of Etrigan the Demon on Batman the Animated Series. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. 
uh, speaking of demons, there was one other. I played a reformed demon in Charmed, uh, which right. uh, was pr like three or four episodes of that, which turned out to be, I think, one of my favorite characters, uh, Drake. Drake Demon <laughs> was his name. It was a great, <clears throat> great, great character. Really and of course, the collector, from, uh, the collector from the collector from Tales of the Crypt. Another demon. Yeah. I've, I've played a few demons. Interesting. Hmm. There's a pattern here. Hmm. Indeed. Not the devil. A, a devil. Indeed. Indeed. Well, Billy, uh, let's go ahead and jump into our audience questions. We'll we still got Please. some time. Yes. Let's go. Let's hit on into this. And uh, our first question comes from Gene. What is your favorite genre to perform in? Comedy. He says spitting. <laughs> comedy, Gene. I like comedy. The secret is I kind of play everything like a comedy, which makes the drama that much more kind of delicious. It's yeah. a little funny. Right, right on. There you go, Gene. Thank you. Good one. From Brian, what is one film or TV show that you haven't been in that you'd like to be a part of? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, SNL. Ooh. And... Um, I would have said community, but I got to do that, which was fun. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what else, what's it, what are the new and fun comedies? It's always the comedies. Yeah. We'll leave it at SNL. All right. Yeah, that works. Not wrong with that. Thank you, Brian. Great question. What do we have Thanks, next? Brian. And here's one from Jeff. Do you have a preference of playing heroic or villainous characters? And if so, which one and why? Um, I like heroic characters. V villains are fun because I, I, I've enjoyed mining the psychology and at least a bit of the understanding and grounding those those uh, the characters into some, you know, tracking some reason. Um, however... I feel there's a pressing need for white hat heroics and something to counter the kind of, you know, uh, let's just say maybe over, uh, overused uh, anti-hero in a lot of our narratives. I think the gray line between hero and villain has been so like, you know, overdrawn that it's just I think young men and women have lost sight of what um, perhaps the markers of moral compass that I think movies provide as a reminder at least aspirationally have lost sight of that maybe at the time it was thought considered corny but it works it's practical yeah, yeah. you know and it's and it's so I, I like a, slight, a, a traditional and nostalgic hero just because it's contrary and it's confident and uh, doesn't succumb to the kind of seeming social pressures of having to be edgy. Because it's, ed it's not edgy to be dark. It's kind yeah. of commonplace. It, yeah. There was a time when, ed when dark was edgy. Now it's like, you know, might as well get a, you know, a tat and a piercing. No offense, but it's not the most unique thing. Yeah, right? There and, was a time when that was a sign of individuality. Now you might as well be, you know, pulling from the preppy handbook. It's a uniform. Yeah. And uh, when we last had on and spoke about the Phantom, again, I, I, I will always praise it for its lack of cynicism. Yeah. You know, and it's, and it's, and it, but, but there's no, there's not really, there's not the campiness either. I mean, it's a straight adventure. That 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 absolutely believes in itself and believes in the earnestness of the characters. Exactly. And Jeff, exactly. great question. Thank you. Very and, good question, and thank you. And for here's one from Andrew. How? Uh, I'll, I'll rephrase this slightly. How was the phantom suit uh, to wear, or suits, since there were multiple? There were a few. Uh, they they ripped easily. Um, there wasn't much to them. They were beautifully decorative. Uh, Marlene Stewart, great job with the uh, the tribal tat printing. There's that's where the tats really seem to work. Uh, yeah. Was uh, this kind of a tribal overprint, which was pretty cool. 
uh, but they were uh, they were pretty unforgiving, very tight. You had to certainly have done your sit-ups and not uh, strayed from the diet. Uh, and um, they breathed for in the in the uh, in the jungles of um, um, Thailand. They were practical because it you know it it, it breathed quite a bit, uh, but they were tight. And they ripped a lot and didn't protect you every time you got cut or hit or dinged. You couldn't couldn't hide any pads in there. So <laughs> I lost a pound of flesh every day. <laughs> uh, was it during the making of or did it come later that they asked you to uh, do one of the Got Milk ads? Um, I don't recall. Must have been after during the marketing. Okay. That was uh, Robert Evans's idea. He approached them and said, "We should do a Got Milk ad." The legend, Bob Evans. No, indeed. Andrew, great question. Thank you for that. And what do we have next? From Kevin. Ah, have you kept any memorabilia from the sets that you've been on? Um, I can neither confirm nor deny. <clears throat> Uh, fair, fair, fair. Or if I, if I rephrased it, have you found yourself in possession of anything from the sets? I can neither confirm nor, nor, nor deny. deny. There you go. There you go. There you go. And we will leave it but at they that. Are, let's just say there are some, certainly there were definitely, you know, items bound for the, uh, for the dumpster or for the tip that, uh, you know, they belong in a museum, I think is the quote. Yeah. To quote, hey. uh, Dr. Jones. There you have yeah, it. All right. It? There you go, Kevin. Ah, thank you for that one. What do we have next? And here's one from Stephanie. What was your favorite memory when filming Titanic? Spending time with the cast and, and the crew at a... Um, right next to the studio that they built basically is on the cliff of this uh, fishing village really in, uh, in, in Rosarito. Um, you go right outside the wall and next door was a, was a, was a, was the village itself where a lot of the fishermen and the families um, operated and some lived and, and they had, you know, fairly makeshift cantinas right on the water. And rather than go to the caterer, which was wonderful, you know, if you wanted an authentic fish taco and hang out on the on the shore and feel, you know, it, it was being, just sitting there, which was so specifically and beautifully Mexican. And then, you know, after an hour suiting up and being immersed in this, you know, uh, 1912 Tweedy Mid-Atlantic aesthetic was just so generous and congruous bizarre you know the mariachi band serenading you had my birthday there you know at the, in the little you know, fishing shacks and then you're back to business and it was just the camaraderie of the experience i think was the most memorable thing there there you go stephanie great question thank you for that what do we have next and here's one from anthony who wants to know who or what were you inspired by in cinema or television? Um, Blake Edwards and uh, those uh, fabulous early Pink Panther movies and that cocktail of chic and stupid that he did so well, which yeah. I thought was so funny, was just making fun of, you know, the luxury space with Henry Mancini underscoring, and it was just ripe for... A, a pratfall or a sight gag or the, the genius of Peter Sellers. Um, yeah. Those movies just satisfied me to no end. Um, uh, also from a, a lot of films from the sixties, the aesthetic, you know, of the early bond films, which were a more serious version of, uh, to a degree of, of that aesthetic uh, was a big inspiration stylistically um john ford black and white you know uh something again some of these classics but also 
the disaster movies of the seventies. I remember going to the going to the cinemas with friends, uh, and seeing the Poseidon Adventure and the Towering Inferno and Cinemascope and widescreen, big cinematic experience. I remember seeing Jaws when I was ten and Star Wars when I was whatever that is eleven. Mm -hmm. You know, in the first run, being a being old enough to appreciate those massive cinematic experiences raiders at first release those kinds of things yeah those early spielberg films when a you know which were made for a boy a young boy and a young girl really and that uh period of wonder and discovery i was right in the target and the hit zone and it worked it made me want to make movies and be the characters there you have it anthony great question thank you i think we have time for one more, let's see if we can go out on a really fun one. And this is going to come from Andre, who wants to know, ah, if you could do a crossover with the Phantom into another fandom, what would it be and why? That's an interesting question. I would have to, if we are staying with the timeline or modernizing if playing a father to son handoff and theoretically i'm playing my own ancestor today then crossing into fandom of this age most likely it would have to be in the uh the king uh world space which is lee falk universe as well the uh mandrake the magician you know but if it's cross-pollinating into uh you know, I don't know if the Phantom would cross into DC or Marvel. Um, so it's hard to say uh, if that's ever happened. Have they crossed? Have those studios, design studios, cross pollinated? Um, not not so until somebody buys an one out. It's a, exactly. It's an interesting question. I think uh, if one was to stay in the period, you know, 20 years later puts you in the 50s. I'm trying to think what took place there. I think it would be fun. So it's the same studio. And the last we left uh, Crystal Skull with, with Dr. Jones was in the 50s. So I think a, and since Jeffrey Bohm wrote our version of The Phantom, who also wrote The Last Crusade, and it's keeping it in the studio family, I think crossing into the Raiders world as we're in the jungle, and it'd be kind of funny if uh, Kit Walker came across Indiana Jones. Yeah. Yes, yeah. there, you know. That would be kind of fun. That absolutely would be. I personally, I'd love to see an adaption of Jeff Parker wrote a, a, a series called King's Watch, which crossed over Phantom, Mandrake, and Flash Gordon, and it is superb. It is wow. the it is one of the best. King's uh, Watch. King's Watch. Uh, it was a, it was a mini series came out several years ago, um, and it's the best comic book version I've read of all three of those characters outside of their original strip form. How interesting. Yes. Dom, make a note of King's Watch, would you? <laughs> King's Watch. Yeah, Dad, I, I think you would really enjoy it. And and who wrote I, it? Uh, a fellow named Jeff Parker, uh, who's, uh, who's who's written some very, very good comics over the past several years. And it's a good cartoon. What as year well. was that? That's really interesting. This when was around 2012 ish, I want to say. Hot put up by Dom. That sounds so. fun. I, I think you'd get a kick out of it. I, I, all, the, like it. All, all the characters are absolutely right and some fun stuff with the Phantom Lore, Lothar and all that. And Love Andre, it. great question. Thank you so much. Great question, and Andre. Thank you. Billy, this has been an absolute blast. Uh, Thank you as ever. Wonderful good. questions. Always fun spending time with you. Thank you. Uh, pleasure is all mine. I, I, I always enjoy hosting you. Thank you once again for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us. And thank you all for your great questions. Hope to see everybody again soon. Until then, bye-bye, take care, and remember, smiles are free. Spend them often.